we need to understand now about a genesis block basically genesis block is the first block of a blockchain whenever you create a block obviously it starts with the first block so that first block is nothing but a default block which is termed as genesis block and the main important thing is that modern versions of bitcoin number it has block 0 the very early versions counted it as block 1 now as you can see over here a typical block includes some values in it but when it comes to genesis block the previous hash is there the value is there but the value inside it it's like we have a key of previous hash but the value inside the previous hash is not mentioned or we can say it is a blank value because it is the first block in the blockchain the genesis block is almost always hard coded into the software of our application that utilizes its blockchain it is a special case in that it does not reference on a particular blockchain. It does not refer to any previous block and for Bitcoin and almost all its directives or all the one which is developed particularly with respect to blockchain, it produces an unsuspendable sus subsidy. As you refer to this figure, the previous hash value is already present over here but the value is empty because there is nothing which is like connected to the previous blocks because it itself is the first block the block one is connected to this one so we can consider genesis block in modern terms as block zero and the previous hash will have the value of this block and for block two will have the previous hash value for block one so this is how it is linked now let's move on to our code base and over there we will analyze how a genesis block is created with respect to javascript so this is our code base and here I'll create my so this is our code base and here I'm going to create my block with respect to Genesis block and that is done with the variable say here I'll take variable get Genesis Genesis block equals a blank value and this will be suspended with some values that is starting with a new block so we will create a new block over here so it will be new block the block which we created with the class the index number will be zero because it is the first block and the next value over here when it comes to block after index comes the previous hash the previous hash is also zero because it is the first block so that is why there is no previous hash. After that, I'll set the timestamp over here. So I'll set the timestamp for some particular date. And this timestamp will be represented with the date and value. So one four six five one five and the next value is four seven zero five. We will interpret this timestamp. I'll show you in the upcoming chapters. After that, I'll set my data. So my data over here will be my genesis block this is my data and afterwards i'll set the next value that is will be the hash here i'm setting up a hash value with a cryptographical function with a 256 byte structure so that is basically created with the logic in it and that hash we'll get from any of the cryptography websites you can create a random hash number with a 256 byte character this is the sample website which I am representing over here and here you can create a 256 kind of byte character because basically in blockchain 256 byte character is usually used while creating a hash. So if I say for 132 and I calculate the particular hash I am getting this value over here. So we will be doing one thing we will copying this hash character and pasting it over here because this is the hash character which we will be using. So this will be done inside codes and my hash character will be printed over here. So I have created my genesis block. Now it is important to initialize the genesis block inside a blockchain. So I will create another variable that is variable blockchain. And this will have a value inside it as inside array as get, get genesis block. And I'll call for this function, which means that whenever a blockchain is initialized, it calls for the genesis block and later the other blocks which are connected to it will be depicted. So this part is done. Now the next section we will be doing is to initialize our HTTP server and P2P server and initializing our connection. 
and after that we will be generating the next blocks which are important for the blockchain apart from this it is important to check the valid block and also calculating the hash which are connected inside these blocks so that complete thing we'll have a look in our upcoming chapters the next section which comes over it's all about initializing the http server so for that we will do after creating our blockchain which we created in the genesis block so over here i will do one thing is initializing my http server so it is mentioned in the comment as initializing the http server and after this i will do one basic code system is declaring a variable for initializing the http server that is variable in it http server equals a blank value which equals some values to be represented in it so the first thing is like i will be calling my express js over here because we have already installed all our express plugins so that i'll declare inside my variable express and then i'll use a parser so passing a particular value is done with the body parser functionality so i will use that body parser over here that is body parser dot json now the next thing is like i need to get the blocks for the initialization so the blocks initialization is done as app dot get and over here i'll get the particular blocks and it will be kept over here that is with respect to request and residing a particular value which is equal to sending a value for initialization because we are initializing with the json so it will be done with json dot stringify and the value will be nothing but our blockchain which we created now but now for a blockchain will have only genesis block because it has only one parameter with respect to that particular block then we need to send this we have we have done with the get url now we need to do the post thing so it is app dot post and that i will post inside a section which is called as mine block so mine block will have the next block sections and it will take two parameters namely request and response now after this comes the next situation to understand the request and response and that will be done over here and this will take some parameters in it so that parameters will be taken inside the curly braces so that is variable new and take it upwards little yes now it's variable new block equals generate this will be my function which we will create in our upcoming chapters while when you are generating a particular block and that will be the generation of the next block after the genesis block so it will take request dot body dot data and afterwards it will add this block so that is done with add block as new block so this part is done then we need to bro broadcast it to a particular network so broadcasting is done over here as with a function namely broadcast broadcast and the parameters is it will be response latest message and afterwards i'll print a console over here that is console.log block added so this part will be done and then i'll mention it inside my concatenation operator which will take a parameter that is json dot stringify and the parameter will be nothing but the new block which will be added and afterwards i'll send my response over here that is response dot send the send parameter and then after 
doing all the necessary permutations and combinations over here. So this mention is semicolon. So this was with respect to post. And inside this, it is important to send a particular value. And for that, inside app get, the way we did for post, the similarly property will do for app get, where it will take the values inside peers. And then it will take the necessary distribution with request and response. And it will take the values inside the curly braces. my app get so I'll append it my code properly inside this I will just send the response with respect to sockets dot map and it will take a parameter to the value that is s dot socket I'm mapping these parameters which will take socket of remote address so these sockets we will define later, but this is like whenever you're initializing with respect to HTTP protocol, it is important to be noted. And afterwards comes the next value with respect to S dot socket dot. The next will be the remote port. So this part has been done. Now we need to set our post value. So after setting up the get value, it is important to get the post value. So I will do app.post, app.post. The next value is to adding up a particular peer. And then comes the request and response in that manner. And which will take some values related to peers so that is done as connect to connect to peers p will be kept as capital and inside this i'll take the next value which will be my request dot body dot peer so here i will send my peer values in the format of an array and then i'll send this request so this is a typical http initialization protocol after this it is important to keep the listening it's like to, important to get that these protocols have been listened by the particular client it's like for the client server communication we need to check these values and for that we'll do over here as app dot listen http port comma it will again take these values this kind of syntax are usually followed when it comes to typescript format so here we will put a console so whenever you run this port it will put a console that it's listening to some port value listening http on port so the port which we declared earlier that is 3001 so that port value will be printed in my console which will give the users or the developers the better understanding that it is locally accessing this particular port so this was when it comes to initializing my http server after this comes the major thing is to initialize the p2p server so for that I'll do next comment section that is initializing p2p server and here I'll do a value with respect to variable variable init p2p server equals a blank value And here it will take a variable that is server equals new web socket dot server new web socket dot server where s will be mentioned in capital and now I'll call for the web socket servers attributes which comes to the first attribute is nothing but my port so port will be nothing but the p2p port which we declared 
You can change the port number if you need it, but for now we are maintaining the standard conventions, the P2P port, and then I'll keep a, I keep an eye with respect to server connection. So that is done with server. It's done with the value dot server dot on, and afterwards it will set a parameter that is connection, and the connection will call for a web socket value inside it. I'll mention our connection parameter is done through init connection which will call for this web socket that will create a function later this function will be created that is initializing my connection so now i'll just do console.log this will be printed whenever npm start like whenever i'm deploying my package with npm it's like listening web socket p2p port on then afterwards I'll mention it in the concatenation operator as p2p port so this part is done so I have declared my variable also now after this comes the next scenario is to call for my init connection this is actually for initializing my connection so which is done as variable init connection equals ws which calls for a value sockets dot push ws and then it will take the parameter which is init message handler and afterwards it will take a value for ws so whatever the ws parameters are nothing but the web sockets associated parameters and then comes the init error handler this is also a function we will be creating this our function in our upcoming chapters and then comes the value which is write so write is a function which is used in javascript to write the associated values so here i'll write the query chaining error message so that is query chain length message this will be declared whenever a next block is created in our next chapter so we have created the connection the http connections and the variables associated to the http and p2p server which is actually when it comes to uh http is this one this one and here after that we even check for web sockets now next chapter we will be focusing on the next thing which is like calculating a particular hash and that is after that we will be generating the next blocks